Hi guys, welcome to CYC. My name's Nathan Hayes, and today I want to do an exercise with you to help you take pride in who you are. Now, not necessarily your achievements, but your way of thinking, your way of being. I know this sounds fluffy and kind of woo-woo and all the stuff I do not like in psychology, but I'm gonna reference like evolution and I'm gonna make it all sciencey and stuff, so I'm gonna kick your ass and tell you exactly why, oh man, I can't believe I did that, tell you exactly why you should be proud of who you are. So buckle up, let's jump into it. <laughs> Oh, for fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're all special and unique, but psychology can roughly measure your personality traits and like your ways of thinking. And that knowledge is kind of seeped out into the public. We now know that an extrovert is someone who's really social, and a narcissist is someone who's quite self-orientated. And as that knowledge is kind of seeped into the public, we've made lists of the good personality traits and the bad. And within those lists then we've kind of developed a hierarchy of the most desirable personality traits and like of course to the least. And perhaps being extroverted does make you successful in social situations or successful in business perhaps. But every personality trait has survived evolution for a reason. And that's what I want you to think about today. I want you to personify your personality throughout history. Why did your way of thinking survive? Okay, let's start off with some easy ones just so you can understand what I'm on about. If you're an anxious person, for example, what role would you have had? Well, you would have been like a watcher, like on alert for danger. But even if you didn't have that job, even if you weren't up in the tower, just you being alive would have made the tribe's average awareness higher to, like, to danger and that would have kept them alive. That would have been a really important role. If you're aggressive, you would have been a protector or maybe a conqueror. Protector's a nice one or whatever, but even the conqueror kind of served a purpose. Whether that's sharing knowledge between two tribes or whether it's diversifying the gene pool, it served an evolutionary purpose. If you're aggressive, you would have perhaps been a protector or a conqueror. And protector like protects the tribe and all the rest, but even a conqueror serves an evolutionary purpose, whether that's sharing knowledge between two tribes or diversifying the gene pool. Let's try a more difficult one before I mention the ones I really want to talk about. And the more difficult one is disgust. Disgust is my least favorite emotion, but even it serves a purpose. Disgust is the rejection and refusal to interact with the unknown. And that would have saved us from diseases and like outsiders back in tribal days or whatever. But it also would have kind of served to bolster our value system, make it less flexible, less kind of impressionable. And this might be seen as kind of a negative today because like, for example, the whole gay marriage conversation that had to happen out in public, it took decades, it was really difficult. I get that. But the same personality trait would have been involved in a similar process actually uh, for topics like child slavery, um, stuff like that, where it actually would have been a source of progress um, because they would have perhaps been raised in like a really nice family, wouldn't have, been, wouldn't have seen it. And then they see it on the streets and they're just like, no, that's wrong, that's whatever. They would have had that bodily rejection of seeing children at work. So as much as I hate to admit it, even disgust has a place in evolution. <laughs> now let's look at some traits of people who I like to group together and call the experiments. These are the people who forge their own path, who fail multiple times and just keep on going. Some of these people have what you might call loose social ties. This doesn't mean that they don't care about people, but it's just an ability to be away from your community, be away from your family for kind of long periods of time. And this would naturally lead you to be an explorer, whether that's Christopher Columbus sailing the seas or in like old tribes where you're just venturing out beyond some mountain range, maybe finding new food, finding a new tribe to work with or whatever. That trait would have been important throughout time. Having low levels of disgust, being highly open to new things, new ideas, that's definitely a trait of an experiment. It's at this point that I must point out that most experiments fail that being open to new people and new foods would have commonly led to death throughout history. It has never been a safe way to be. But without experiments, we'd still be making axes from stones and perhaps not even that. So if you are failing at the moment, I want you to let that sink into your bones that the universe doesn't care if you're failing. It doesn't care if you're succeeding. It just cares that humans are still experimenting, that they're still growing. So I want you to take pride in just being part of that group because without experiments, we just, we wouldn't have all of this. And by the way, if you are not part of that group, if you do not feel you're an experiment, if you're all about the structure, well, the experiments need you too. And evolution needs you too. Because without you, the experiments would just float off into the abyss in like a second. 
that like normal functional society has to happen. So in that, you can take pride in the success too, in the progression, because both sides are needed. So guys, that's it for today. Now this exercise can be done with all personality traits, so please personalize it to what's relevant to you. But if you like the video, hit the like button. If you wanna see more of the videos, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye guys. <laughs>